Mentioned in the U.S. President Barack Obama's speeches these days as America prepares for the upcoming congressional elections next month. During a rally held... His biggest challenge in education wasn't budget holes, it wasn't crumbling schools. It was that the parents were too demanding. Korea's education is praised even by the U.S. President Obama. What was in the children's the passion for education that burned strong despite difficult circumstances has become the driving force behind the development of Korea. Much bigger than... Korea is walking forward step by step to produce creative and talented people. What form will the new education that will change Korea's future take? New York City, the center of global economy and culture. The city shows off its glamour that benefits its fame. However, if you go slightly beyond Midtown Manhattan, you will come across a unique neighborhood that is different from other parts of Manhattan. It's Harlem. Here, the demographic is mostly African-Americans and Hispanics. Recently, a school here has gained much prestige among students in this area. It's the Democracy Prep Charter School. We now have what? How do we say that? This school for grades 1 to 12 opened in 2006 and has a short history. However, the classrooms are filled with passion for learning. The teachers and students look very serious and passionate as they carry on with the lessons. As you said, it was LaShawn. How do we say that again? Even though it's front row that thinks I can't see him, pencils are in the group. Can you call one of your haters to hear about how they... Matthews? It would be, I believe it would be opposite of X, Y. Axis, which is number two, so the opposite of number two is two. Lewis, call on someone. They only have one goal, to attend college. To achieve that, they ceaselessly push ahead. And their hard work is now beginning to pay off. You've all heard work the school has produced 45 graduates in just seven years since its inception. Everyone has been accepted to a university. Even UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is here at their graduation to celebrate their achievement. Congratulations again. They were able to accomplish such a feat thanks to the Korean-style teaching methods. Since its foundation, the school has implemented a Korean-style education system and has continued that to this day. First started when we first started Democracy Prep, there were a lot of hallmarks that came from Seth Andrew, our founder's time in South Korea. Um, certainly our commitment to um, a structured school environment was one of them, um, but uh, the way it got started was Seth's very personal experience in, in teaching in Korea in our schools is actually because it, of what it does for our scholars, which is to put them on a different path than scholars that are um, in high-performing schools like ours, um, but are learning Spanish or French or even Mandarin. Our kids are set apart by learning Korean. The teaching method here is a new method that is a cross between the American and Korean teaching methods. Within uh, the Korean sort of education, um, there's a real respect and reverence for learning. Um, there's a real respect and reverence for the teacher as the purveyor of knowledge. Uh, I think there's a real reverence for um, a certain type of educational environment that um, expects students to be serious, uh, to be hardworking, um, and to really value their studies. Uh, and I think our pedagogy here really uh, tries to infuse a lot of that into the way we run our schools. Placing importance on rules, smartly scheduling classes from early morning to evening, the teachers being devoted to their students, and the students respecting their teachers. As you can see, they have adopted only the strong points of Korean-style education. 
In this school, Korean is a mandatory subject that must be taken for a student to graduate. When she learned the pasta liberating tiger dancing? In this school, Korean is a mandatory subject that must be taken for a student to graduate. Although Korean is completely different from English, the students do not waver in learning it. The students are serious and sincere as they learn Korean. At our school, our students are learning Korean as the only foreign language course, and that is not elective, that is actual core class. Our students are expected to learn four years of Korean before they graduate. They have to pass all four years of Korean. The reason that we set the bar really high, unlike other high schools that requires only one year of a foreign language course, take the Korean LUT exam, which is a language other than English exam, as a graduation exam, just like a Regency exam in New York. What I like about learning Korean language is the fact that it's totally different from the language that I'm used to in my native language back home from Airway. Um, the Korean language has the verb at the end of the sentence, and it's different because, you know, in America, you have the subject and then you have the verb. And then when I'm back home, my native language, Airway, is also the verb comes after the subject. So those are like two different distinctions, but at the same time, now that I know like the verb comes at the end, I'm able to speak it more fluently to other Korean people. And where is the basic offer? Yeah. Korean style teaching continues even after school. This after school program that teaches traditional Korean culture is very popular among the students. Today, we're going to learn about Kangang Sule, a traditional dance Korean women used to enjoy. Although it's a simple dance where you hold hands and go around in a big circle, the kids, who are all experiencing this for the first time, are excited. In addition to having fun, it's also a novel experience for these kids to learn the sentiments unique to Korean culture. And they come to this class and they study Korean dance, they study the K-pop, and they're studying the poetry. I have a group of students who couldn't make it today who love the poetry, who love expressing themselves using the Korean style, using the Korean meter, using the Korean shijo. Learning to be open towards and acceptive of different cultures. I believe this is the most important thing that Korean style education teaches. Korean style education is heading toward a new era. Unlike the past when entering college was the top priority and only goal, now Korean education is progressing toward a creative education that lets the children explore their dreams and talents. Here we find a leading role model for the Korean children of today, receiving creative education. This person who's surrounded by kids and enjoys fame similar to that of a celebrity is the robotic scientist, Dennis Hong. He's an idol to these kids. Dennis Hong is currently on a lecture tour working hard to deliver dreams to children. Why do the kids go wild over him? A global knowledge sharing conference, the first Korean to be a lecturer in TED. Develop the world's first car for the visually impaired. Dennis Hong firmly became the icon of creativity by successfully developing the first humanoid robot in the U.S. How did his unique creativity come about? To meet Dennis Hong, we flew to Virginia Tech in the U.S. where he teaches. Romela at Virginia Tech is a dream factory where Dennis Hong's outstanding creativity shines. The car behind that vehicle is the famous blind driver challenge vehicle. This is a one-of-a-kind car where a blind person can actually drive. We're trying to use our robotics technology to help people who actually need it. And this is a fantastic example. There's more. This place is full of cutting-edge robots developed by Dennis Hong. 
Darwin OP is an artificial intelligence robot that is gathering much attention. It recognizes things by the camera on its head and moves autonomously. It is also a strong example of Dennis Hong's determination to create robots that are beneficial to humans. So we developed many different types of robots, but this robot is a little bit special. This robot is called Darwin OP. Darwin stands for Dynamic Anthropomorphic with Intelligence, and OP stands for Open Platform. We spent a lot of money and time and effort in developing this robot, and if I sold it or just give it a license, I probably could be a millionaire by now. And the surprising thing is, in less than one year, more than 300 units of Darwin's are being used worldwide. So I'm very, very proud of this robot, Darwin OP. His creativity doesn't stop here. He has recently issued a robotic engineering challenge to DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, which will be selecting the world's top disaster control robot in December. Dennis Hong is currently in the middle of developing a robot for this contest. He must create a robot that moves freely like humans because the robot must be capable of taking on the human's role of saving valuable lives in disaster sites. Much bigger than... So this robot is called THOR, Tactical Hazardous Operations Robot. It's a robot for disaster relief. Uh, so for example, uh, last year in uh, Japan, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident, uh, expert says that in the first 24 hours, if somebody could have just closed one valve, they could have prevented the entire disaster. The problem is in those kind of disaster situations, like radiation leaks, people cannot go near the disaster site. So we're developing these type of human robots that can use for disaster relief. We, we develop these new type of actuators. These are called series uh, elastic linear actuators. It acts like a biological muscle. So using those technologies, this robot can walk on very, very rough terrain, can get into a car, drive a car, use all the tools for humans, and close a valve, climb a ladder, and do all the things, can carry out all the tasks to save the world. So this is really a robot to save humanity. To Dennis Hong, robots are not cold machines, but rather autonomous beings that move on their own and help people. However, such robots are created from shapeless metal hunks. So this is truly the case of creating something out of nothing. What is the secret to his creativity? When people see our robots, everybody says that our robots are really creative. And for that, I really try to teach creativity for our students. But the problem is, what is creativity? It's a very difficult subject to teach. But more, before that, we have to understand what creativity is. Uh, for me, creativity is not really the ability to create something new, but rather it's the ability to connect things that are not related. If you look at some of our robots, a good example is a robot strider, which I got the idea from braiding a hair. And instead of hair, if you think of those, of those as legs, that's where the new motion came to play. Uh, when we do work at research work at Romella, I generally give the general direction to the students and I give them the freedom to explore different opportunities. And the students come up with all different ideas and through research, we uh, really develop the ideas and make it new technology. So every aspect that goes into designing a robot, Dr. Hong will stress, the creativity, the design, the manufacturing, everything we do, we'll, we'll do it very well the first time and then he'll have us redo it entirely. But he also helps keep us very motivated. He says the education he received when he was young had a huge influence on him. He was a curious child who got into many scrapes. However, his parents never once punished him. Rather, they supported him fully in his extraordinary curiosity. Ethan, where is... And now Dr. such an education Dr. method Dr. is being applied to his own son. <laughs> his son, who is only five, is just like how Dennis was at that age, full of curiosity. Ethan, are you fixing the robot? Is that the right size? Yeah. So Ethan comes to our lab about three times a week and he carefully studies how our students and uh, our researchers work on the robot. And he tries to imitate them. So using these Allen keys, he doesn't know how to really fix the robot, 
but he picks the right size and I puts it in the bolt hole. It tries to uh, you know, imitate us fixing it, and that's what he's doing. Even at home, he endlessly expands his effort on creating things. Cooking is actually science, it's also an art. Uh, the important thing is you need to understand each ingredient, its characteristic, uh, the taste, the texture, everything changes. So once you understand that, uh, create something completely unexpected. And we'll see how it goes today. So these are all bell peppers, and again, the colors are different, and their flavors are actually have this very subtle flavor. And it's not just the color, but the taste are different. It is his wife who reaps the benefits of his unusual passion for cooking and his views on cooking as another science project to be completed. Okay. You wanna try it? Sure. Be honest. Pretty good. <laughs> Dennis is on his guard even when he's resting. There seems to be too many cell phones for just one person here. I like to purchase the latest and greatest gadgets, be it the cell phone, the newest computers. I want to really test it with my hands to evaluate them. Some technologies are really great, but some are just junk, and I'm really curious about those kind of things. For me, creativity is about connecting new things. And so two things are important. One is, how do you uh, connect those things? The second thing is, you need to have a lot of things to connect. Dennis Hong is a world-renowned robotic scientist. The secret to his creativity is nothing special. You just need to design your dream with an open mind and a basis of various experiences. He says that is the starting point of creative education. Korea's job training even garnered global interest when Korea's team won the overall championship at the International Vocational Training Competition that was held in Germany this year. In the place where the people who will be responsible for Korea's future are gathered here. It's the Meister High School that produced technical Meisters. Gumi Electronic Technical High School is located in the provinces, and yet it's very popular among students all over Korea. In the classroom, the students are busy showing off their works of creativity. Although it may seem plain, this component is essential in making electronic products. 모든 전자 제품에 필수적으로 소요되는 PCB 설계 과정으로 전자 캐드 프로그램을 활용하여 PCB 시제품 제작을 하는 프로젝트 수업을 진행 중에 있습니다. Gumi Electronic High School produces technical meisters who are needed in industrial sites in the field of electronics. The classes are all based on practical works that are currently being conducted in corporations. You can see the talents of these kids that have had their skills honed sharp during club activities here. The students are building a special helicopter. They're all busy making a manless disaster monitoring helicopter that watches out for any abnormality in areas that are difficult to access. This is a cutting-edge multi-copter that has been equipped with a camera and can be controlled with a smartphone.
The teacher only provided guidance. The helicopter was made purely by the students. Even though they haven't graduated yet, they're already on their way to becoming technical meisters. 저는 하늘을 나는 로봇을 만들고 싶었습니다. 그래서 지상에서 할수 없는 재난 감시를 하는 멀티콥터를 만들게 되었습니다. 마이스터로 전환된 이후로 100%의 학생이 취업을 하고 있습니다. 취업처로는 삼성, LG 등 국내 대기업 그리고 공공기업의 약 80%의 학생이 취업을 하고 있습니다. The unemployment rate is becoming worse all over the world these days. But the graduates of Meister High Schools are armed with practical skills that can be utilized right away in work sites. That is why they're welcomed by most of the companies. It is the same for Busan Automotive High School. In this school that produces automotive technical Meisters, all of the seniors and even the juniors have been hired already. But the student's passion to learn more burns brightly. To help the students, the school even purchased expensive equipment that makes the school look like a real industrial site. They actively utilize them in class. Furthermore, the teachers are also technical meisters with backgrounds in industrial science. 예, 저는 이제 사회에서 레이싱 팀 미케닉으로 쭉 일을 했었고요. 약 블라스트 팀에서 3년간 근무를 했었습니다. 나가서 사용할 수 있는 그런 테크닉적인 부분이라든지 견적이라든지 이런 정비 실무 부분에서는 아직 약하기 때문에 그런 것들을 좀더 잘할 수 있게끔 현장에 잘 적응할 수 있게끔 제가 따로 교육을 하고 있습니다. 막연하게 이론적 측면만이 아니라 현장에서 쓸수 있는 기술을 가르쳐 주시니까 이론과 접목해서 제가 이해하기가 쉽습니다. 기술력으로 인정받는 사람이 되고 싶습니다. 병장이 네, 된 것이 제 꿈입니다. 자동차에 관련된 그 공학 박사 같은 게제 꿈입니다. A society where competence is recognized more than academic achievement. A society where creative thoughts are given more value. This is the future that Korea is currently working toward. And behind this effort is the educational plan that spans a hundred years.